You're watching KTN Prime. It is the 31st day of July 2014. Many thanks for joining us. Let's look at the top stories today. Our sign language interpreter is Meresha Owiti. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the program. Let's start from the House on the Hill. And President Uhuru Kenyatta said the government is moving to repossess public land illegally allocated to some 22 private individuals. Speaking after meeting with Lamu County leaders at State House Nairobi, the President appeared to be addressing the recently voiced concerns of Lamu leaders that the land issue was at the center of the insecurity witnessed in Lamu in the last two months. We shall be bringing you those sentiments by the head of state in a few short minutes. Now the Council of Governors has moved to court to contest the constitutionality of a new law sent to by President Uhuru Kenyatta shifting control of county projects to senators. The County Government's Amendment Act of 2014 would make senators, the chairpersons of county development boards and the governors fear this effectively gives the senators control of all development projects in their respective counties. Well, Kristen Yabua has that story. The Council of Governors is up in arms over an act just signed into law by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Members' first stop on Thursday was at a court of law to challenge the constitutionality of the County Government Amendment Act of 2014, an act whose implementation governors say would undermine their powers. The act is unconstitutional. The Constitution is clear that the Governor is the Chief Executive of the county government. The act seeks to introduce county development boards in each of the 47 counties to be chaired by the senators. This putting the senators at odds with the governors who argue that the act fails to recognize the fact that the governor provides leadership in the county's governance and development. The act is a blatant violation of the county government's act section 33 of the county government act is unequivocal in stating that the governor provides leadership in the county's governance and development. It is therefore gravely prejudicial to create a body dealing with development and such body fails to recognize the developmental development role of the governor at the county level. Further, the governors argue that the act interferes with the principle of separation of powers under which county governments are supposed to make both legislative and executive decisions. It's not a question of the incapacity of the Senate. It's the question of the role of each uh, category of leadership. The Senate is established as part of the national parliament. Um, county governments is another level of government and the constitution talks about the two levels of government in which sovereignty is exercised at the two levels. They have declared the law illegal and unconstitutional, saying the amendment can only be made through a referendum. Thus, they have vowed not to abide by it, digging in their heels as they await a verdict from the court. Wilkinson Abu KTN. Now, this next story is one that you may not want to allow children to watch. A woman in Sierra County is now living almost permanently in the maternity ward at a hospital after her husband and neighbors rejected her due to a strange disease. Jacqueline Awino suffers a condition that has seen her breasts enlarge to the point that they're now dropping on her knees. Once again, we would like to warn you that some of the pictures in this story may be disturbing. Lying in the maternity ward at Yala Sub-District Hospital, 24-year-old Jacqueline Awino is a woman in pain. She suffers from an unknown condition that has seen her breasts turn black and enlarge enormously. Her faint voice and understatement of pain she's feeling. It all started in January this year when the mother of two felt her breast itching. With time, her situation worsened since her breast became painful and started enlarging uncontrollably. The biggest blow was when her husband of seven years threw her out of their home in Ugunja because of her situation. <laughs> Now, 
Narudi kwetu ili nitembee kwetu. Jacqueline later went to Yala Sub District Hospital where she was screened. Mimi nilikuja walinipiga picha kwa tumbo. Walipata nilikuwa na shida nyingine hapa kwa tumbo pia kibao. Ilikuwa shida mtoto alikuwa hajatumbo. Kumbe alikuwa shahara dunia alikufa kitambo. At the Yala Hospital, Jacqueline was given painkillers and drugs to drain water from her breasts. The condition could still not be diagnosed. Her mother, Josephine Auma, is distressed by the situation. Having gone to all lengths to try restore her daughter's health, she knows not what further action to take. She even had her admitted in the maternity ward in order to cut on costs. Sasa tunaomba tu mwenye anaweza kutusaidia tusaidie kwa sababu hata mimi niko tu hivi mzee wangu naye alikufa kitambo sina sina uwezo nimejaribu juu chini na siwezi Jacqueline's prayer now is that there would be a health expert who can properly diagnose her condition such that she can get healed and perhaps finally reunite with her husband and children Shalma Mani KTN uh, in, an incident, in an incident that has left many in Yeri town puzzled, a woman this afternoon tagged her baby with the name and phone number of the alleged father and dumped the baby where the man works. And as KTS Karundari reports from Yeri, the man says it is possible the baby is his, but cannot exactly remember who or where the mother is. They converged in groups outside the government's children's office over news that spread like bushfire in parts of Nyeri town. That a child barely a month old had been abandoned outside the security firm's offices surprised many. Arikuwa mefungwa tu na kati ingia durisha. Then, akatutafutua kati, tuka mfungwa vizuri, liwa kareto hapa. What was more puzzling though is that the child bore an identification tag that had the name of the alleged father and his mobile phone number. The child, alikuwa mbewe kwa tag ya jina ya baba yake. So they showed to me mshukua ako hapa kwa shudren with the in charge of shout health officer. Madhe li togele hile zaidi ya posta kujaga mebeba mtoto hivi. Sasa kama wacha kwa hiyo koredo tukonatua mekibia hivyo hiyo zaidi ya posta. Sasa haka patikana badai kwa hiyo koredo. It is on this very corridor that the child is said to have been abandoned by the mother who possibly felt that it is time the father took up his responsibilities of bringing up the child. And the man in question whose name and details appeared on the tag was contacted Aloysius Mushori. I have been told that my child has been taken away from me and I have been taken away from my child. I have been taken away from my children ndio tupate ukweli lakini kulingana vile tumeongea tumepata tutapata ukweli He seemed somewhat phased but said he would accept the baby as his seen as it is that the tag identified him as the father He said he's willing to bring him up pending further investigations to ascertain actual paternity Gana ile address imeandikwa hapo ni yangu lakini tutachuguza zaidi tujue ni wangu ama si wangu What about the mother of the one month old baby boy does he know who she is? Police say they are scouting for an appropriate children's home for the child regardless of Mushori's utterances that he was ready to bring up the baby boy. It's like uh, the father of that kid. So it had, doesn't support the mother of the kid. So the mother had to brought the child mari babaki anafanya kazi so dia kamua badon hapo na ye akaenda it is not certain what will happen to the mother if and when she is found no one could tell either why she did not approach the man directly and hand the baby to him if she was so sure carol derikitian nyeri interesting Lawyer Paul Mwite today told the Supreme Court judges that the Communication Commission of Kenya, as it was known then, violated the Constitution when it ordered the Standard Group, Nation Media Group, and Royal Media Services to apply for fresh vacancies. Mwite maintained that the three media houses are not opposed to digi digital TV migration, but were concerned that the process adopted to migrate would violate the freedom of the media. Patrick Amimo has more. Lawyers from the State Law Office, Signet, Pan-African Network, 
and West Media spiritedly opposed the Court of Appeals orders compelling the Communication Authority of Kenya to issue free digital broadcasting licenses to KTN, Citizen and NTV. The parties also criticized the Court of Appeal for issuing orders stopping digital distributors from broadcasting content from the three leading mainstream TV channels. High Court, in looking at the petition, considered that the issue of intellectual property was not a proper issue to be brought before the Constitutional Court. And we would submit that that is the same position that this Honorable Court should take. We hope that at the end of this trial, there will be order and therefore anybody can have access to participate in media broadcasting. Signet is broadcasting, has got a platform for digital broadcasting. Nobody has stopped Western media from using Signet to broadcast digital. Muita urged the Supreme Court judges to carefully scrutinize Articles 33 and 34 of the Constitution, which guarantee freedom of expression and freedom of the media. The first, second, and third respondent, respondents are not opposed to digital migration. They support digital migration. It is a process that they are concerned with. Standard Group, Royal Media Services, and National Media Group said the digital migration case has reached the Supreme Court after the government failed to fully implement the ICT policy and task force report on broadcast media. The three media houses said until an independent broadcasting regulator is created through enactment of a broadcasting act, CCK had no authority to issue orders for fresh frequencies application. That CCK is constituted was not the body mandated under sabbatical three and they had no power to start ordering us to apply for fresh licenses as far back as August of 2011. Muite questions Wednesday's claims by the government that Pan-Africa Network and Star Times are different companies. Pan-Africa Network and <clears throat> Star Times, their offices, their addresses are the same. But we are being told to produce evidence <laughs> they are unrelated. When my learned friend was saying that, he was reminding me of <clears throat> this young girl in Ruiru, who is told to go and pick out the father of her boy who was a uh, Chinese. Miss, she said she was not able to, because they all look the same. <laughs> The case continues Friday, though the Chief Justice, Dr. Willy Mutunga, has said the court may sit on Saturday should lawyers fail to finish their submissions. Patrick Amimo, KTN. So a few minutes ago, the President has just addressed the nation on Lam when he has said that the government is moving to repossess public land illegally allocated to some 22 private individuals. Speaking after a meeting with Lamu County leaders at State House, Nairobi, the President appeared to be addressing the recently voiced concerns of Lamu leaders that the land issue was at the center of the insecurity witnessed in the county in the last two months. Here's the, re here's the rest of the President's speech. So far, we have earnestly pursued a comprehensive program on the issuance of title deeds to which significant resources have been allocated, ensuring that citizens and families of security of tenure with increased food production, create more investment opportunities, and improve housing and health outcomes. It will also minimize disputes over ownership between individuals, families, and communities. The overall result will be, will be empowered Kenyans whose efforts are joined to increase opportunities for all. Last year, we, back, we began this program in the coast region. While in Lamu, I directed the Cabinet Secretary for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development to carry out a comprehensive audit of the land allocations in Lamu County. This audit is now complete and has revealed a number of shocking details. 
we have established that between 2011 and 2012, almost 500,000 acres of public land, which is approximately 70% of the land within Lamo County, available for settlement and other productive purposes, was alienated to 22 private entities under dubious and suspiciously corrupt circumstances. While a few used illegal means for their own gain, the many thousands of families living in this county occupy only 30% of the land available for settlement and production. We have established that this alienation was not done in accordance with the principles underpinning land management in the Constitution of Kenya, nor the laws regulating public land alienation at the time. This criminal conspiracy has disposed individuals and families living in this region of their land and opportunities for improving their well-being. It has also helped fuel the current insecurity being experienced in the region and frustrated our efforts in building cohesion in the county. For far too long, this pattern of mismanagement of our public resources has resulted in this possession, strife and poverty of Kenyans. This level of impunity revealed by the audit is unprecedented, untenable and indeed unacceptable. In light of the foregoing, I have instructed the Cabinet Secretary for Lands, Housing and Urban Development and the National Land Commission to revoke or possess these land parcels with immediate effect. I further call upon the Inspector General of Police, the Criminal Investigation Department, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to commence investigations with a view to bringing to account all persons who are involved in this criminal enterprise without exception. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, earlier today, I hosted the presidents of Uganda, President Yuri Museveni, Prime Minister Alemariam de Salain of Ethiopia, and President Salvakil Mayadit of South Sudan to explore ways of financing our massive 24 billion lapset project. I am determined <coughs> that we must ensure that the kind of criminality that we have seen in land transactions in Lamu County will neither derail nor delay one of the most important transformative regional trade and investment projects of our time. Therein ends my statement and I thank you and uh, we will continue this meeting with our colleagues from Lamu County tomorrow as we continue to discuss more issues affecting that county in a view of ensuring that we bring an end both to insecurity and we begin the real work that Kenyans gave us of ensuring prosperity, equity, fairness, and ultimately the growth of Lamu County and Kenya as a whole. I thank you for your attention. President Huru Kenyatta addressing the nation a few minutes ago. And that is the basis of a big question. Tonight we are asking you, do you think the government's move to repossess public land in Lam will end the insecurity in that particular county? Of course, President Uhuru Kenyatta saying 5,000 acres of land are owned by 22 individuals. The rest, uh, thousands actually occupy only 30%. Let us know what you think. You can tweet us at KTN Kenya, at Linda Ogutu, at Ben underscore Kitili. You can also send a short message to the number 22 155. Would love to sample some of your thoughts on that directive. For now, we take a quick break. Ecological upper limit of containing inflation of just about 7.5 percent. Now, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics attributes the jump to a rise in electricity prices following the review of power tariffs and food costs. With inflation rising during the period, households had to contend with the higher prices of commodities. Now, this is the highest inflation has hit in close to a year after it hit 7.76 in October of 2013 following the introduction of the value added tax on previously exempt goods. Razia Khan, who is the head of Standard Chartered Africa, however, predicts that inflation could rise to 8% by December. She further predicts that the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee will hike the base lending rate to just about 9% when it sits next. 
However, CBK has set an inflation target of 5%, the margin of 2.5% on either side. Let's talk some bit more numbers now in a bit to cement its top position in the market. The KCB group is mulling buying out smaller banks in the country. Now this is part of the bank's strategy to consolidate the market share and grow its future income. Fresh from posting 11.6 billion shillings in their gross profits during the first half year, African expansion is also on the cards for KCB. Here's KTN's Adlad Changole. The banking landscape could soon change as the biggest bank in the region with an asset worth in excess of 440 billion shillings considers buying off smaller banks as it seeks to consolidate its number one position and grow its asset base. The bank is well capitalized. We have as, you know, funds available today. We need to do a move. KCB is trying to fend off increased competition and acquire the financial muscle to take part in some of the lucrative but capital-intensive projects being rolled out regionally. The move would consolidate the fragmented sector, increasing efficiency and stability while heralding the era of bigger and stronger banks capable of playing a bigger role in the developmental agenda of the region. Our capacity to lend up to $250 million. I believe that we need to see that grow to half a billion dollars and eventually to a billion dollars in the next three, three to five years. In the meantime, the bank says it plans to issue a eurobond to raise funds that will be used for onward lending to the underdeveloped mortgage sector. We are very keen to take the bank into the international debt market to raise funds for a long-term investment for our mortgage businesses in the market. KCB already has a double A long-term rating from the Global Credit Rating Agency, but plans to get international accreditation as it prepares for the bond. My view for international rating will be quite close to the sovereign rating, something which we're working on the second half of this year. KCB is also eyeing key markets in the continent like Zambia, Mozambique, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Somalia as it seeks to grow its reach beyond East Africa and reduce reliance on the Kenyan market. That's the next phase of our growth and I think from 2015 we should see ourselves progressively running on that area of growth. The bank posted a 16% increase in pre-tax profit for the first half of the year from 10.1 billion in the same period last year to 11.7 billion shillings this year. Adelaide Changole, KTN Business. Well, as bankers continue to count profits for the first half of the year, players in the tourism sector are dancing to a different tune, that of reduced earnings. Now listed hotelier TPS East Africa, who run the Serena chain of hotels, announced a 72% drop in profits during the first six months, posting 58.2 million shillings in gross profits. Now this is a sharp drop from the 205 million shillings the group posted a year earlier. KTN's Charles Gitonga has more. Players in the tourism sector have had nothing good to write home about over the last two years. Rising cases of insecurity at the coast are further added to their woes as tourists literally pack their bags and leave. As foreign governments issued travel advisories, tourism numbers have nose dived. Today's results by TPS Eastern Africa give a glimpse of just how gloomy the situation in the industry is. During the period under review, revenues fell to 2.7 billion shillings from 3 billion shillings a year earlier. This was mainly driven by booking cancellations that have been a feature in the industry. The Kenya Tourist Board this month said that the first quarter arrivals had dipped by 4%, but players in the tourism sector feel this is highly underestimated. However, the firm maintains that it's only the heart of its business in Kenya that has been greatly affected, with its subsidiaries in Uganda and Tanzania maintaining a good run in the period. Analysts reckon that the drop in earnings is a true representation of how far the sector has been hit by not only insecurity, but also poaching, uncertain political climate, and the recent introduction of value-added tax on tourism services and park fees. Further to this, they add that the tourism sector, which contributes 10% to Kenya's GDP, as well as businesses in it, will benefit if security improves. Charles Gitonga, KTN Business.
Uh, from the Commonwealth Games, a 32-year-old jobless man, Andrew Mganga, is one of the millionaires in town. He went home with a whopping 5.35 million Kenya shillings after betting through the Sport Pesa weekly jackpot game. He used up the entire amount he had on about a thousand shillings of that week to place a bet and was lucky enough after previous unlucky bets. Despite being discouraged by his wife for not winning the jackpot after playing regularly, he kept on betting. He placed his bet on Saturday and forgot about the bet. Two days later, though, he was a millionaire. He dropped out of college because of lack of school fees and wants to invest a bit of that money with his education and that of his wife. They let it, they let it as no fun, as promised to continue betting for the ultimate prize since his love for football and especially the English Premier League has rewarded him abundantly. How many times did you play before winning? Uh, the jackpot? I've been, I've been playing since it started. You know, this professor started around uh, March. So when I saw the advert on one, uh, in one of the newspapers, it started immediately. Take you back to the Commonwealth Games and the Games Marathon Champion Philomena Chayech has, was, as expected, was accorded a heroine's welcome when she landed at the Eldoret International Airport this morning. Chayech led a Kenyan one to finish in the women's marathon at the ongoing Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Scotland. She led Caroline Killel in clinching the top two medals at the Games. And this morning, family and friends flocked the Eldoret Airport to receive the gold medalist who became the first of of Team Kenya to leave the games currently ongoing in the Scottish city of Glasgow. <laughs> is building a strong defense that he hopes will exonerate him from this pitting punishment that has attracted a one-year suspension by the African football governing body CAF. Already, Amrush has received support from the Comoros team head coach. Head coach Adel Ambrosia together with his legal team is building a watertight defense that he hopes will exonerate him from the splitting charges that have been leveled at him by much officials who handled the Africa Cup of Nations pre-qualifier between Comoros and Harambe Stars last month. He opinions that what the referees claims could have been water from the fans who are seen sprinkling water from the terraces. His other defense is that the fourth official was behind him while he was having an altercation with the center referee. In Comoros, don't tell me, Papa, you don't see the situation. You see everything. If the R1, he saw the coach spit, I gave him one million. Amrushi, however, blames outside forces for his predicaments. I can find small support. But, Papa, I see the virus coming from all sides, left, right, central. The Commonwealth head coach defended Ambrosia and believes the ban was too harsh and wants Cav to reconsider it. Meanwhile, besides missing the coach on Sunday and subsequent matches, a number of stars will have to do without striker Denis Oliech and custodian Arnold Origi, who have not been released by their clubs. The Sunday match falls outside the FIFA calendar. Hans and Juma. Land will end the insecurity in the county of Lamu. Ramadan Muyuka says, no, we need people to be charged for arson, murder, and repossession. And another one, Mutemi Mugumo says, if it is the ultra behind it, then no. But if it's the politicians, then yes. At uh, Jacarino says, I thought Lamu land issue should be traced back from colonial times to address the issue of insecurity. Yes, and another one uh, sharing those sentiments saying, uh, should the government wait until the damage is done for it to do something? That is a question by Chafet Ngetich. Finally, Yusuf Omete says, it is not Lamu alone. What happened to the Ndungu report postponing problems is what we are best at. And Svets, another one who uh, begs to differ, says, no, there are other factors that are contributing to insecurity and equality. That is what they should focus on. Those are your opinions. Thank you for participating. Thank you so much for watching KTN Prime. We are done. I'm Linda Ogutu. Sleep well. Hey, thanks. From the KTN News Center, my name is Ben Kitili. Have a wonderful night. Remember, Jeff Koenange Live begins shortly. <laughs>